uh, I'm very excited to, to be today with you here because this is the first time that uh, Huawei is joining you on the Tri Week. And I want to thank the team of Digitopia uh, inviting us to present, let's say, our vision and our involvement in AI. As a company and vendor that is involved in AI, not only from the AI computing, but generally from the old aspects, even the networking and the infrastructure, I would like to go through some of, uh, let's say, point of views that maybe will be interesting for you to see how we are looking on it. Um, generally, what we are having today is um, that AI is already reshaping the industry. And uh, honestly, there is one question, and, and most uh, important question is why now? Uh, readiness of AI, we can say that for sometimes is already on the market. So. If we are speaking about algorithms, we know that the first algorithm showed up in the uh, 1950s and 1955. And generally the algorithms that we are using today and their most popular are coming from 1980s. Yeah, so there is already, they're already here for some time. Data, uh, even that IoT with wireless came up recently, let's say in the last uh, five years ago. Uh, we can say that we already had enough data to build all, all these uh, modules and algorithms and use generally the benefits of AI. From the other side, again, computing power. There is computing power already and industry already uh, using, uh, let's say, data center centralized uh, algorithms approach. So why now? That's one of the questions. And First question that uh, generally we would like to answer is that, is it about cloud computing? From our side, yes, cloud computing is important, but uh, as you probably know, uh, computing is already going on the edge. There, we have smart and powerful terminals. And uh, today we have smartphones that are probably more powerful than uh, some data centers uh, launching uh, space shuttles probably in the 70s and 80s. So it's not only about the computing, yeah? So I think that uh, generally intelligent computing is bringing benefits and bringing what is coming with the edge AI. But what about latency? Latency is something that uh, today is probably influencing on the AI benefit mostly from our point of view. If we are looking for on the industry, generally the biggest benefit is when you have data gathering, data processing, and sending results back to the industry line close to real time. So generally, this is something that is very important and without which generally we will not have benefits from AI as it now today. So is it about 5G? Yeah. We think that generally 5G is very important. And um, honestly, without AI, we will not have the 5G because 5G is here to optimize generally the beams and to make 5G work prop as we are knowing today and of course even more in CG and what we are expecting. But from the other side, we are getting this latency and speed that is helping us to build proper AI solutions. Uh, and latency, when we are speaking about 5G, is incredibly important because Today, 5G latency theoretically is about one millisecond. And the latency of the human brain is three millisecond. What is showing generally the technology is becoming much more powerful than human senses and, and, and human biology. From the other side, apart from the latency, we are covering more and more IOTs on the ground. So we will have like tens and hundreds of million of devices inside one square kilometer. So yes, 5G is still important, but from the other side, again, uh, our technology environment is generally moving very fast and we see that Moore law is not working anymore. Uh, we have some boundaries, we have some limits, and uh, all the new products, even from Huawei side, are coming from heterogeneous computing. So even when we are saying that we have one of the biggest, probably the, the, the fastest storages and most performance storages on the market, 
it's coming not because uh, it, it, there's some big boom in, in terms of uh, new performance of, of the processors. It's more about that we now have processor units solving different kind of tasks independently. And this is bringing to us not any, only uh, computing, but generally specialized edge devices. So is it about heterogeneous computing or what? I know that uh, uh, well, last two days we were discussing here on the conference about the trends and I will try to a little bit avoid the same numbers we are mentioning all the time and, and uh, discuss something a little bit different. Uh, all these technologies are bringing this edge intelligence to us that is bringing AI in our uh, society and generally in our lives. And from the other side, it's not enough. Yeah, because we are now having transformation between data center computing and AI data center computing to all scenario computing. And edge is playing here a very big role. In this case, I just wanted to give you an example. This is one of our, uh, use, let's say, uh, cases that we develop in a few countries. And this is monitoring of power lines. Uh, here, it's very important to mention that today you can put camera with some AI accelerator mod module. In, uh, in this case, this is Atlas 200. And it can independently process all the video streams and imaging that is doing, not sending any traffic to the data center. And power supply can be so small that they can have all the power supply from the solar panels. So you can imagine that you have camera, fixed camera mounted, that is taking pictures and switching on every minute, checking, and doing monitoring and just sending the alarms to monitoring center, not sending the video stream or images. And only in case that something on their line cannot be recognized, there is some event or object, the camera will send automatically these frames to the data center. And inside data center, we will have what we are now calling and we are expecting to, to, you know, saying that we will expect it in the future, but generally it's happening. You're having retraining of the module on the edge or in the data center. And then the same model is going back to the edge or going back to the device and continuing to work and recognize the new identified objects. So that's one of the, let's say, just the examples how intelligent edge and how generally intelligent terminals already are working independently. So even when we are speaking about the drones, we are now having the partners that are using drones without any GPS because they're processing uh, and comparing uh, what they're seeing from the camera and what's on the map. And they're doing that without any connection with the data center without any kind of 5G or any kind of Wi-Fi. So there's a different task that are now enabled by this edge, intelligent edge and intelligent terminals. Of course, there are different cases. Yesterday we were listening uh, how uh, AI is generally bringing benefits to manufacturing. So I will not, let's say, focus that much on, on this slide or for it. But I just want to show you some environment that can be very complex. Because, and you have different kind of edge solutions here. You can have independent edge solutions. You can have quality inspection that yesterday was directly connected to industry computer because of the industry computer vision. That was heavy solutions. Now you can have this connection with 5G or Wi-Fi 6. This is the cameras that already have the modules. So they will just send you the messages. And you don't have any more the optical cables. You have robots that are again having uh, modules inside it and they can process all the tasks independently or of course you can have man-machine collaboration 
And from the other side, you can have totally different solutions that are generally connected more to the data centers, more heavy solution and more customized one. So it's not enough to just, let's say, go and uh, rely on the edge. It's all scenario AI, AI what we generally need. So this way, uh, it become much easier for AI to become part of our life. Uh, having these solutions helping us to become more accessible in terms of uh, performance and of course in terms of uh, costs is bringing to every day life for us. And generally this is why rapidly all the environment is changing. And we're coming again to the numbers because gathering the information and processing on the edge and processing in the terminals like uh, phone or like sensors, IoT sensors that generally uh, today are uh, not only anymore, uh, let's say, gathering the information, but generally the processing the information. We have explosion of data. We have explosion of the smart terminals. And generally, uh, we have migration from data centers to, to, to the edge for calculations. And uh, AI today is, for example, 80% in the data center, but in the future, we're expecting that it will be distributed. And all this is bringing some big expectations for the GDP. And generally, in from 170 and plus, com, uh, let's say, uh, countries that are having digital strategies, even today, more than 30 are having AI strategies that really uh, have big expectations that AI will bring to uh, to the GDP and to the future in, in 2030. So where we are now in, in terms of uh, adoption of AI generally and uh, in, in Europe, in, in China, and, and generally in US, uh, we are speaking about 21st century as, as artificial intelligence because we are expecting that AI, and it is happening, yeah, that AI become really general purpose technology. What we are now facing is phase that we are a little bit in collision between technical development and social environment. We don't have all these laws and all on the place, and we don't have generally the infrastructure on the place, and we don't have um, enough knowledge about AI because most of our conferences, and I hope that you will agree with this, is a uh, kid inside the ICT community. And generally, who needs to be uh, educated in, in, in this area is mostly the end users. And we are not the end users. We are the one creating these kind of solutions. And uh, let's say what we really like is what Finland is, for, for example, doing, educating people and uh, providing them free courses in terms of AI and you can get basic certificates and knowledge. So, only there, then we can move to let's say mutual improvement of technology and social environment. And generally, we can look forward to some bright future and generally uh, some benefit that AI will generate, that, let's say, aligned to all the ethical, uh, let's say, standards that we expect it to, to happen. But again, if we'll come back to the technology as we are the technology vendor, ICT vendor. Uh, even that edge is bringing some simplicity, so for some basic AI solutions, in general, it's very complex environment. Uh, when we are solving the, the problem and making this kind of what we're calling digital, digitalization, digital transformations, we are not thinking only about AI and generally the computing. We are taking care about end-to-end -end solution and we, uh, probably um, are not thinking of most of the time because this is somebody uh, as solving this, but uh, for AI, it's very important to have very advanced networking and more and more it, we are speaking about wireless networking. And by some, let's say, surveys done by Deloitte, for example, a big number of companies and inside the industry are, are saying that generally the networking is very important and for big data analytics is like 95 percent for cloud 95 percent for iot 83 edge computing 83 and ai 84 percent and uh, 
this is something that we need to have in, in account because without, let's say, real time and close to real time latency, we'll probably not have all the benefits that we're expecting to have from uh, AI. So how Huawei can answer on these challenges? Uh, I will not discuss uh, today 5G that we are very, and we are very popular in these terms and, and generally the networking, but I would like to, to discuss and mention the AI because I think that the, our AI portfolio and our AI strategy is not something that is uh, uh, pre-known in, uh, in Turkey and generally in, uh, in our region. So Huawei of course will keep to the strategy that it has and uh, we are very keen to, to invest and we are doing that a lot in all the uh, technologies but today we will discuss what we are doing in, in AI and in AI generally we have investing in basic AI research is what we are and here it's not only the, the first of course association is that that all this is most probably happening in China no uh, we have this um, research centers very heavily in our region and in Europe there is one in Turkey and uh, there is one in uh, uh, Germany in Munich, there is one in uh, Paris, there is one now in, in Warsaw, in the regional office where I'm sitting, and there is one in Moscow. So this is only, let's say, in Europe, the ones that we have as research centers for, for, for uh, AI. From the other side, we are building a full stack AI portfolio, meaning that we are producing our chipsets, our edge devices, and modules, our server, our cards, accelerator cards, and general inference cards and, and training cards, our servers and our clusters. Uh, from the other side, uh, tomorrow I'm, I'm inviting you to Osgan Bay, my, my uh, colleague, will have a session, a workshop uh, between 4 and uh, 5 o'clock uh, p.m. and I'm inviting you to join him and to see uh, more about cases and, and portfolio. But just to mention that uh, the third one, uh, part of the strategy of course is uh, cultivation of, of talents and we're working a lot of with universities and I'm inviting universities if they're listening to, 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 to contact uh, or uh, uh, our host today, DigitopU, or even uh, our, our uh, Huawei office. And of course, um, we are building very heavily uh, ecosystem. And I can tell you that today, uh, Huawei is having for the next five years for Europe, a uh, fund about 100 million euro and supporting not only universities and research centers, but generally building the, the uh, different kinds of solutions and uh, innovations with the partners and building the partnership uh, uh, in Europe and generally in Turkey. Of course, uh, we're bringing uh, not only our full stack portfolio, but generally we're implementing AI in all our solutions. When I'm saying all our, our solutions, I'm speaking about networking, I'm speaking about wireless, I'm speaking about uh, phones, I'm speaking about computing. So all our, uh, let's say products, and we are one of the rare end-to-end -end ICT vendors, have already built our AI. And we are using, let's say, our technologies, and we are using even from some, even designs from wireless we are using on some of our edge products. And this is why we are trying to be, and let's say, better than the other vendors, because we can transfer this kind of experience from one kind of product line to another. And of course, we are implementing all these things in, uh, and improving in, in, inside our factories. And uh, I hope that soon we'll have uh, less problems uh, with this kind of viruses and we can travel again. And I'm inviting you, of course, to visit some of uh, Huawei factories that are now open to see how uh, Huawei is seeing this uh, smart factory. So just small overview of the portfolio that I already mentioned, yeah? So as you can see, we have today two types of processors. One is S310, that is inference, and other one is 910, that is generally the same technology, but uh, with the better density and, uh, uh, let's say, different kind of operators. Uh, so it's a training one, but we have, for example, just to mention, a few formats of the chipset. So we have Nano, we have Mini, we have uh, uh, 
macro, of course, we have modules that uh, you can put the, in, a, in a different drones and you can put in a different cameras to make them smart, as we mentioned, or you can put in robots. You can have uh, our solutions for the edge, like Altas 500, that you can put uh, on, uh, on some crossroad and control and process 16 cameras, for example, on it. You can add to, to it uh, one hard disk, just like a module to it. And of course, you have interfaces like Wi-Fi inside, you have LTE, very soon we'll have 5G inside as a module. So this is one of the edges. Of course, you can have acceleration card, you can put in the server, you can use a server, for example, 800 or 800 training server. And of course, Atlas 900 AI cluster that is one of the fastest clusters, most performance clusters uh, for training clusters in the world. And uh, on the next layer, of course, we have full enablement from the, uh, let's say, platform side. So we have the libraries that are allowing you to customize and work and build the new operators uh, uh, to, to chipsets. Of course, we have the frameworks. If you're supporting the, 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 let's say, mainstream frameworks of the market, so you don't have any kind of problem to, to, to work uh, in a heterogeneous environment. So we are supporting TensorFlow, PyTorch, Cafe, and other ones. And of course, we have MindSpore framework for Huawei that we are more than sure that for some tasks and some test scenarios, they're um, better than the one that we already mentioned. From the other side, when you're developing a scenario or, or developing solution for based on a, a Huawei AI, you don't need to think it will be edge or it will be cloud or it will, so where it will be, let's say, ported. It's the same solution. So it's all scenario deployment. And you have fully collaboration automatically between DC, edge, and device, meaning that, or as I already mentioned, that all this process of uh, gathering the information, sending this, doing the training on the, on the in data center, and sending back uh, algorithm to, to the module, all is automat done automatically. And from the upper layer, of course, from the framework, we have fully solution for, let's say, development uh, AI uh, complex information system, starting from, let's say, managing data sets and, and of course, finishing the porting of the solution. So let me come to the end a little bit with something that I can say is uh, where we are going and uh, how our uh, uh, roadmap is created. We are finding that there's a 10 different changes that are really in, in, uh, creating the future of the AI. And uh, this is where we are focused and this is what, what we are developing in our AI portfolio. We are trying, of course, to, to on the first place, to uh, reduce uh, the training time from days or months to, to minutes and seconds. And it's not only the question of the performance, yeah? Uh, from the other side, and by the way, we are doing that pretty well with, with different kinds of uh, parallel processing here. And this is, if you're interested, generally, uh, or our colleagues in, in Turkey or uh, regionally can do the special workshop for all these points. Of course, uh, computing power is expensive and uh, still not that much accessible. Uh, we are trying and we are having a big success uh, making it economically and um, accessible to everybody. Of course, we are bringing to the edge as much as we can AI. As I mentioned, for example, our modules are very powerful. We are speaking about, let's say, uh, 16 to 22 teraflops with very small power consumption. So it's successful. We are working on new algorithms. This is what our AI research centers are work, doing because uh, the algorithms, uh, what we are using are coming from 1980s, yeah? Uh, we're working on fully, let's say, um, semi-automatically and, and intelligent environment in terms of uh, data labeling and in terms generally of uh, um, communication between uh, not only in development, but uh, generally in, inside the full cycle of uh, the uh, training. Uh, of course, 
we are working that AI is working on the highest level of reliability. And uh, what is most important from us is, of course, security. And this is where we have a huge uh, experience as you're using every day, probably, uh, our equipment when you're uh, using mobile connections. And uh, this is where we are really uh, taking care about security end to end. And this is what is implemented already in our AI. So everything is encrypted, encrypted from the device uh, terminal or edge to the data center and back. So, of course, uh, real time, closed system, uh, generally de de developing and simplifying the, the, the approaches and, and making this uh, for, for less skillful people. Um, and of course, uh, bringing this collaboration between data sciences to the one level. So this is all what we are already having in our uh, strategy and our roadmap. And this is the things that we already uh, on the way to, do, to, to finalize in developing. And uh, this is generally the, our roadmap. So at the end in Huawei, we know that pretty slides are not leading to real impact to, on the industry transformation. So uh, therefore I am inviting you to try Huawei Edge and generally Huawei equipment after try week. And uh, you can contact, as I mentioned already, our host uh, Digitopio or our, our local office. You can contact me or my colleagues by this mail or my personal mail. And uh, I really want to thank you everybody for having us here today.